Pixies, and welcome to Adventures in Pixieland. This is your weekly reading from November 24th to December 1st. This space has been cleared, and these decks have been shuffled and cut with Pisces energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in, but before we do, let's handle the busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Pisces content is uploaded. Pisces content comes out every single Thursday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal reading, please check out that description box for my contact information. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, you can find a link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings based upon subscription level. Now, let's get into a little astrology before it is that we uh, jump in to these cards, okay? So, because what we've had recently, in case you've been feeling this tension that's like everywhere and it just feels like it's too small of a canvas stretched out over too much of a frame and it feels really intense and like something's got to pop and that's because we've had a bunch of signs in Scorpio and it is unusual to have a bunch of planets in the si same sign at the same time and they were all in Scorpio and Scorpio likes the dark it likes the shadows it likes to to auger in and get deep and it's not very communicative and it's not very outward so it just is like this a lot of tension and you're like what is going on and it's all the feels all at once because Scorpio. But what's happening now is things are shifting into Sagittarius. So that, that energy is cracking. It is changing. Okay, now Sagittarius is very dynamic. They're also uh, very not afraid to be loud. They can be a little overbearing at their, their worst with their, their vocals. But in their best, they can be a lot of fun. They can totally be let's go party. On November 16th, Venus went from Scorpio where she's not happy into Sagittarius where she's pretty happy because it's flirty. And then Mercury went from Scorpio to Sagittarius. So all that non-communication is now all of a sudden you can't get people to shut up. And then on the 22nd, the day, well, two days before this reading started, Right, it, uh, the sun shifted into Sagittarius from Scorpio, and in addition uh, to that, the day before this reading on the twenty third, we had a new moon in Sagittarius. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that, we've had Mars retrograde, which is just means there's not a lot of action being taken when Mars goes retrograde in Gemini, who's a communicator and a thinker. But in this instance, because it's retrograde, it could be a little overthinking happening. Also, Gemini's, they've got dual sort of energy happening there, right? They, uh, Gemini's have two faces. That's just the way it is. It's not, I'm not calling them names. I'm just saying this is the way it is, okay? Because the Gemini, the symbol for it is the twins. There is a duality in every Gemini. I would argue there's a duality in all people everywhere, but... It's more obvious, more on the surface with the Gemini than it is with other people. So it actually makes it just a little bit more honest because you know that that's what you're getting when you're interacting with that sign. Now, Jupiter, you know, I do believe on today, if not today, then within a day or so of this, Jupiter is moving into Pisces. Jupiter is the planet of expansion and Pisces, you are the dreamers of the astrological sign. So just because things on the surface look like they're okay, doesn't mean they're okay. The world is walking around wearing rose colored glasses. But in reality, with all that Sagittarius, there is a higher likelihood for things to get heated. There's a higher likelihood of communicating too much. There's a higher likelihood of saying things that you can't take back. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a reality there. Now, any romantic relationship that you entered into, uh, in this month span from November 16th until in, in December, when things shift again, which will shift into Capricorn. Okay. And Capricorn is a taskmaster. They're not this fair weather stuff, right? Uh, it's likely not to last, especially with Mars being in Gemini and, you know, Jupiter being in Pisces. It's not likely to last. It's a flash in the pan. One night stands is what I'm talking about here. Knight of Wands, 
you know, not anything substantial, right? Now, if you have an existing relationship that is romantic, that's already there, and things have been being dull, the good news is this is likely to spice it up. However, if there's existing conflicts within that relationship that have remained unresolved, it is likely to come to a head, especially with, you know, Thanksgiving, this thing releasing on Thanksgiving. Families get together. If your families, when they get together, is normally lighthearted, fun, playfulness and stuff, if that's their default nature, then everything being in Sagittarius, it's, that's likely what it's going to be like. If, on the other hand, your family is not that way and they tend to, when they get together, to be knocked down, drag out fights, that is also likely to happen. Take it as it resonates. This is a general reading. Messages for... Pisces, November 24th to December 1st. Messages for Pisces, November 24th through December 1st. Messages for Pisces. Messages for Pisces. November 24th through December 1st. Messages for Pisces. November 24th through December 1st. Messages for Pisces. Okay, now I will clarify all these cards, but before I do, past, present, oh, sorry, present, near future, someone to you, you to someone, balance, outcome, summary. So, this is your energy. Pisces Sagittarius energy, as a matter of fact. But it's also an element of divine timing is at play. And Three of Wands is looking towards the future. Three of Swords, 33, might be important to you. I would look up that angel number. Okay. Uh, three of Swords, that's heartache. A third party interference, that's some kind of sadness. You weren't liking what you were seeing in the past when you were looking out towards your future. Hopefully you made a change. Uh, present moment, eight of wands. You're communicating with somebody. Fasted, fast paced, rapid movement. Could be over the internet, could be text, written. It you know doesn't have to be in person. You take that as it resonates. Actually, move that up there. So in your near future, four of swords, seven of cups. There's a need for a rest and to look at options here. Someone to you, four of wands. This is the halfway to marriage card or the marriage card. There's a 11, 11 might be important to you. 44 might also be an angel message. I would look that up. Yeah, so someone to you, looking at you in partnership, looking at you in fun. They like what they're seeing when they're looking at you. You to this someone. This is the queen of cups. It's in the you position. You are a water sign. It's really just you. You might need to use your intuition when interacting with this person. Balance is found actually in a conflict. Seven of Wands in some kind of tension. Some kind of distress. There's also like, you see all these wands are pointed at her, but she just don't care. Look at her. She's very, I don't care. They can think of what they like. I don't care. All right. Uh, outcome is the lover's card. Now this is Gemini energy, but it's also just a card of partnership. This doesn't have to be romantic. It could be though. That person in that four wands situation, if it isn't a marriage or, or a romantic relationship, it could be your, your boss. It's an official partnership of some kind, right? So you and, you know, you work at a place, you work for a boss that's, that's an official relationship. So it's a choice to be made or the outcome has to do with a partnership. Now you got the death card that's Scorpio energy. But it's also a, just a card of rebirth instead of necessarily an ending, especially with the Ace of Wands right next to it. That's a passionate new beginning. Five of Cups, so there's sadness here. You're sad about a fresh start? Sad about a relationship? Don't take sadness into your fresh start. I'm like, why would you do that? That's not good. What is this Wheel of Fortune about in Pisces Past? Strength card, this Leo energy. What is this Wheel of Fortune about? Pisces past, nine of pentacles. What is this wheel of fortune about? Five of swords. If 55, I would look at that as an angel number as well. Hmm. Five of swords, it's a conflict. 
something not quite right. I need to be strong and be patient. Winning at all costs isn't really winning. Nine of Pentacles, you want to be right or alone. I mean, because you can be right and alone. But you can't necessarily, if you're holding on to right so hard. Nine of Pentacles is also a card of single, successful. In the minor arcana, it's an empress, in case you're interacting with a Taurus or a Libra. Take that as it resonates. Being successful in, in waiting, even though there is this conflict and you're an attempt to be strong. What is this Three of Wands about in Pisces past? Ace of Wands, Two of Swords. What is this Three of Wands about in Pisces past? The Tower. So some kind of tower moment happened. Can't build on quicksand. You were looking towards the future, feeling indecisive, and realized that something needed to come to a complete and total stop in order to get somewhere. Possibly dealing with the justice situation. Could be, because um, that's Libra energy again. Or uh, also, you know, could be a legal situation, like a marriage, or it could be a court, uh, something official here. And a need for a fresh start. What is this Three of Swords about in Pisces past? Knight of Wands. What is this Three of Swords about in Pisces past? The Hierophant. What is this Three of Wands about? Um, it's Three of Swords. Sorry. Knight of Wands. That's any uh, fire sign. Aries. Um, Sagittarius. Leo. Heavy on the Sagittarius. Nine Wands is also Scorpio energy, in case you're encountering any of those. Hierophant is Taurus energy, in case that is relevant for you. Seven of Pentacles is about growth. Wanting growth. Likely within a relationship. Again, any official relationship. Probably this is the same person. Marriage card, marriage card. It's like a thing there. Definitely a cross connection. Maybe this person, if they're not one of those signs, maybe they were in and out with you. Maybe there was a lack of consistency and that wasn't sitting well with you. It's fast moving energy, Knight of Wands. Player energy is how we usually refer to it, especially here with the Three of Swords. Maybe a third party situation, somebody coming in between the two of you. What is this Eight of Wands about in Pisces present? Two of Pentacles. What is this Eight of Wands about? Ten of Wands. What is this Eight of Wands about? Okay, I'll take them both. The Chariot, it's Cancer Energy, Six of Wands. So Six of Wands is a card of victory. Chariot, Cancer Energy. It's about moving forward, though. Ten of Wands is setting down a burning, feeling indecisive. So a lot of communication coming in about not sure what to do here. This situation can't stay the way it is. Ten of Wands, it's a burden. You're looking for victory and success. Lots of communication about how you move forward, about how you gain success. Talking. Lots of talking is coming up here. That's what's going on in your present moment. Let's see if it continues. What is this uh, Four of Swords about in Pisces near future? Two of Cups in reverse. What is this Four of Swords about? The Fool. What is this Four of Swords about? Ten of Cups. Hmm. Two of Cups is Cancer energy, but it's in the reverse, so this partnership is in a rest. Maybe there's not a lot of communication happening about a particular topic, but Aries energy here with the Fool, wanting a fresh start, wanting to talk about a relationship, Ten of Cups, a community. But something needs to be put to rest here first. Something needs to alter so you can have this fresh start to go into this movement. That's probably what these options are about. What is this Seven of Cups about in Pisces Near Future? Three of Swords. What is this Seven of Cups about? Pisces Near Future. Seven of Cups. Clarified by the Seven of Cups. 77 might be an angel number for you. Um, <laughs> four Swords again. 44. <laughs> four, 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 actually. Three of Swords. 333 three, three, instead of just 33. Seven of Cups, though, it's about looking at options. And you're really seriously looking at options. Some here you're not so sure of and you're trying to puzzle it out. Three of Swords is about whatever the situation is here in the past that you were dealing with, with the non growth in the relationship. And again, also directly related to that relationship there of wanting this fresh start, wanting this relationship, because Four of Swords here, Four of Swords there. This energy is just moving. You can see the movement. If you're paying attention, right, you see the movement of the energy. 
in the read. It's like little steps and increments happening here. So it, really look at those options. They're all your options to look at. You're not going to have this rest without exploring these options. What is this four of wands about in Pisces in your future? Queen of Cups. Again, that could be any uh, other water sign. Okay, because this is another person. So it could be another Pisces. It could be a Scorpio. It could be a Cancer. Okay, also a Gemini with that Queen of Cups because that's Gemini energy. Wheel of Fortune here again. You had that in the past. You have it in your future. This person is still in a place of divine timing is at play. There is going to be a communication to come from them. They are going to tell you what is needed, what they need. Make sure you're listening. It looks like they're Queen of Cups, you're Queen of Cups. I don't know if you guys are the same sign or different signs, but also you guys could be mirroring each other, which is a common thing with a divine match. What is this Queen of Cups about in Pisces future? Ten of Swords, what is this Queen of Cups about in Pisces future? Seven of Swords, what is this Queen of Cups about in Pisces? Five of Pentacles. Okay, so whatever they're communicating to you, you don't really like it. <laughs> So, Five of Pentacles, that's a feeling of left out in the cold. You're hearing something that you find troubling. I mean, look at Blanche. She looks so sad, right? Look, at she looks so hurt. Her hand is even hurt. She's sad. Seven of Swords, that's lying. It's manipulating. That's cheating. Right? Ten of Swords, that's a card of betrayal. Whatever you're being communicated to, something is being told to you that you don't like. And you want to bring an end to whatever this is, whatever this Seven of Swords is. Whether it's you responding back to this person, not being entirely honest, or you coming up with a strategy. Maybe they're giving you a communication. You don't like what you hear, so you're trying to puzzle out a strategy and how to fix it. Seven of Swords balances Seven of Wands, right? So feeling defensive. Maybe they say something to you that makes you feel defensive, makes you feel betrayed. What is this Seven of uh, Wands about in Pisces Balance? Ace of Cups. What is this Seven of Wands about? Ace of Swords. King of Pentacles. That's Aries, Taurus energy. Could also be Virgo or Capricorn. Uh, in case you're encountering one of those signs. Doesn't have to be, though. Could just be somebody standing in power, right? Some A boss of some kind, maybe. Or somebody you view very highly king of pentacles is a very successful kind of person so ace of cups ace of swords you got the ace of wands here too i mean this is a really powerful impact here this communication this truth because the ace of swords is a realization it's a truth being handed to you about whatever this relationship is for you okay about this ace of cups with whoever this person is it is why Either you're going to give them information and it's going to leave you standing in defense, them standing in defensive energy or the other way around. I really feel like this is you, though. You are going to be standing in defensive energy because of whatever they communicate. What is this lover's card about? Death, the five of cups, the two of wands. Okay, so you got a repeat of two sets of cards here. Being on a crossroads, not sure which way to go because of, of sadness. Maybe a renewal of sadness or there's a need for an end of sadness. You've got the Five of Cups there too, so let's get some clarity down here. What is this death card about in Pisces' future? Eight of Pentacles, the star. What is this death card about? Seven of Wands. So... That's your balance there. That information that left you feeling defensive. It, it, something's got to happen here for that to end. There's an element of destiny at hand. That's also an Aquarius energy in case, you know, in case you're encountering an Aquarius. Very highly likely this is about work, whether it's a work situation, like you're in, in, interacting with work people, or it's about work that needs to get put in. Maybe the work you're being asked to put, be put in to have a renewal <clears throat> is leaving you feeling defensive. What is this Ace of Wands about in Pisces' uh, future? 
Three of Wands, what is this Ace of Wands about? King of Swords, what is this Ace of Wands about? Justice. Okay, so... Three of Wands, Ace of Wands. Three of Wands, Ace of Wands, right? This one was clarified by the Tower. Justice in the Minor Arcana. Two of Swords, Justice. Okay, so it's the same. Whatever you were dealing with in the past, you're still dealing with. You didn't finish dealing with it. So now here it is in your future. You want a fresh start. You're looking at your future. You're trying to find balance. It's possibly to do with a marriage, possibly to do with a court case, possibly to do with a job. Maybe you're interacting with a Libra. Take that as it resonates. King of Swords is Capricorn Aquarius energy, but it is also Gemini Libra energy. So take that as it resonates. Can just be a person who needs to be very critical in their mind. Okay, King of Swords at their best are very clear thinkers. They can be a little cold, actually, in how they think. But you want a fresh start. You're looking at the future. Still wanting that fresh start that you wanted in the past. You need to try to find this balance, and you might need to make a very clear-cut decision. Sometimes it's not at all about wishy-washy, right? What is this Five of Cups about in Pisces? Outcome, oh, Four of Pentacles. What is this Five of Cups about? The Devil. What is this Five of Cups about? Ten of Pentacles. So the Devil is Capricorn energy, in case you're interacting with one of those, but it can also be a sign of toxicity. You found out something within a community was more toxic than what you thought it was because somebody was holding on to something they shouldn't be holding on to. Whether that's you or it's them, I couldn't tell you. You'll have to take that as it resonates. And it makes you sad. Whatever here is being held on to makes you sad. Whether that's a Capricorn holding on to you, you holding on to a Capricorn, or one or the both of you holding on to some kind of toxicity with whoever this person is but it's definitely within an existing community so advice for pisces november 24th through december 3rd ten of pentacles five of swords queen of swords now this can be any air sign libra gemini aquarius it's also a card of Virgo in case you're interacting with one of those. I really feel more like that's you. Your community has got some problems in it. There is five of swords going on there. There is stress. There is tension. There is problems within whoever this ten of pentacles is for you. Whether that's family, that's work, that's your book club. I don't care what it is. It's whatever community you feel like these people I'm talking about resonate with you. Right? That's where it is. And those there's some stress there there is some headache there's some conflict there's some win at all cost attitude which doesn't help anything and you might need to be making some clear you know head over heart decisions here all right this this queen of swords here she is the person on the four of swords there it's just like a younger version of her here this is part of the evolution for her to get to there. Look at her, how her, her heart is next to her. Not in her chest. Next to her. Sometimes head over heart decisions have to be made for you to move forward with the next thing. So just think on it carefully and try to figure out where it is that you need to cut out whatever it is that isn't working. Or you might need to stop interacting with or cut out of the group. Maybe you need to boat somebody off the damn island. Do what you got to do. This person's going to expose themselves to you, though. They're, you're going to know who they are because they are going to come through and tell you. So you're not going to have to wonder for very long. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the deck that does it. So think on that. Messages for Pisces. Romance. Messages for Pisces. Reconsider and recovery. Three R's in a row. Look at that. That doesn't, that's never happened before. Take some rest. Four of Swords. You're going to need some rest. Something needs to be put to rest with that head over heart uh, decision that needs to get made. Reconsider what you thought, how you thought things were going to be. That plan isn't working out. Do something else. Romance. Bring you some love into this situation. Like, 
I know it's telling, telling you, like, make head over heart decisions with this reconsider, but then you're telling you to be hearted. You, you need both. True balance is not either cold, clear cut decisions or everything in the fields. I know the Pisces can be a little extreme sometimes, okay? Depending upon how you have the rest of your chi chart. You guys do, you're in the moon card. You do get all deep up in your feels, right? Balance is in between the two. It's compassionate, heartfelt connection with another person while holding boundaries, while, you know, looking out for each other. It's not all one or all other. Advice for Pisces. A new start is coming, new moon. Advice for Pisces. Communication is key, new moon in Gemini. Advice for Pisces. Have faith in your dreams, wax and crescent moon. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. A personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. Look at the bigger picture, full moon in Sagittarius. Balance, spirituality, and practicality, full moon in Pisces. Conclusions are within reach, full moon eclipse. Okay, let's get you a fairy message. Messages for Pisces, I guess that's the one. <laughs> Wands of enchantment. With our wands, we recharge your energy whenever it wanes. Ask for our help, and we will work our wand magic and revitalize you. You will feel an immediate boost of pure, sparkling energy. Hmm. So this Sagittarius energy, because that is a uh, wand it, energy, is fire energy, and Sagittarius is a fire sign this month might help you find revitalization. It might feel for you like you can open up your mouth and speak now. They can speak, you can speak. Things can reach some kind of resolution. I would take that energy and ride with it, Pisces. That's what I would do. See where it takes you. Try to be balanced. Try to come from a heart place, place of heartfelt compassion. But try to be balanced in it too. Don't back down, don't avoid. That's what I would say. Reach for the compromise. We should always be reaching for the compromise. I hope that helps, Pisces, because this is what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, you are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars, and you have a right to be here. <laughs>